And yes, this concerns normal raids too, even if they are optional content. No, no, it doesn't. No, it literally doesn't. You stating that it does doesn't make that true. It doesn't concern optional content because it's optional. It's allowed to be harder. It's allowed to ask a lot more of you. It's allowed to be ob like obtuse about how it asks that of you. It is optional content. I don't know if I can fully talk about this yet. We haven't beat Dontrell. For anyone paying attention to the YouTube channel a little bit, I put up two videos. One of them was FF14 players think Dontrell's too hard which had no full gameplay of the trial. It just had two little clips of me screaming. And we all saw how that went. Please direct your attention, stack marker boys, to the nail that we're on. You know That's about all I showed. And then we talked about the difficulty problem that doesn't exist in this game. I know this is an old topic, but I was on vacation. I want to talk about it anyway. I thought something was really funny about how the comments kind of skewed because on the one where there's no gameplay and i'm just making my point with the reality of the situation that is in regards to my main argument which was how long you would be playing ff14 and how many dungeons and trials there are and the clip they made i'll just use the title but 75 dungeons, 42 story trials in, and it's hard now. Skill issue. My 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 reasoning on this still hasn't changed. For people that want more context, Dontrell came out. FF players hit the first trial and the first dungeon, and then the next dungeon and the next trial, and then continued through and eventually finished Dontrell. But it led to a lot of people going, man, these are way harder than the other ones. This is stupid. Why is it so hard now? I actually have to do mechanics that I've had access to since the very first trial in the game. If you want to know what I mean by that, um, my second video that actually has gameplay that's 20 minutes long will highlight that. However, what I wanted to talk about that had me laughing was... All the comments on the video where I'm not playing the game, I'm just talking, were pretty much like, supportive and go, yeah, it's crazy that people are struggling with these mechanics. It's not that hard. And echoing my sentiment. However, <laughs> the comments on the other video, I'm not going to like delete any of these or anything. I just want to talk about them. <laughs> Instead of talking about the argument it's just people mad that i'm clicking on my skills and not playing samurai in the most optimal way i'm gonna keep clicking on skills i'm never gonna stop because it drives people mad and it's hilarious watching them get mad when i'm clicking on skills that are not, that are just ogcds and they don't really matter because we're doing normal content so i wanted to talk about this comment specifically though they didn't timestamp. So I don't know. Hold on. Let me see if I if I could even find where I said this. I literally don't know how to read those. Okay, cool. I found it. I need to go grab a, a part of the Titania fight really fast. So I just need this. So this comment. I don't know how to read those. Quite hypocritical for someone to say that when we've had the same mechanic in Titania and Shadowbringers, and yet you don't know how to read those. But getting mad at people for not understanding a mechanic is totally fair. So I did this fight again off stream and I realized why I couldn't read these. And I know it's hard because it, they are different. And I don't mean they look different. They are visually a different tell, but the same mechanic. And the reason I say that is because if we take the Titania fight and we look at the lines that are sent out. The lines are accurate to where the AoE is going to go. So the AoE is going to shoot out in the direction that makes logical sense based on the very clear lines on the ground. If we look at the other one, you'll notice something, which is what threw me off during the fight. Yeah, I'm getting one guide. I'm going to let myself get one guide here for a minute because this actually annoyed me that they mixed up the mechanic just enough to make it confusing. You'll notice the lines are in between the goddamn AoEs. 
this Titania mechanic has existed across many other fights, and every time the AoEs come out of the lines, like the little in-between segments. Not for this one, though. Where they originate is actually from these little cent like central cylinder things. So they shoot out from the cylinders themselves. They don't actually shoot out from those lines. So, yes. Technically the same mechanic to the commenter. If you ignore how it's implemented. All the other comments can stay. You can fuck off, though. All the other comments can stay. I don't care. You can laugh at me clicking on skills or whatever. I don't care. At least engage in a genuine argument, though, please. If anyone that plays FF wants to go, like, have a chuckle, I don't... I'm not going to remove any other comments. Just that one, because that one was fucking stupid. I, I do not understand FF14 sweats that get ass hurt over clicking skills when you're not doing Savage or something. Even if you're doing Savage, who cares if you're clicking skills also if you're still winning? If you're still clearing, who the fuck cares? Oh, you're right. The tells are very different. If it makes you feel better, I got blown up by the avalanche in that fight. Okay, well, I don't know how that happened because that that's super easy to dodge. Sorry, Zyra. You're on your own. <laughs> Skill checking. Clicking can be problematic on jobs that are heavy on double weaving, but others are probably more feasible. Like, I'm not going to argue that there's, you know, not ever a situation where clicking on skills is statistically a detriment. My point is, I'm doing a basic bitch trial. Bro, if you're this sweaty, like, like I, I always be casting. There's times where you're not using GCDs for like five to ten seconds. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? Who cares? Sell can play however they want. I'm going to keep playing wrong. Like, I'm not going to... I will literally agree that I'm playing unoptimally. I'm not going to disengage with the argument. I just find it funny that I got a bunch of sweats on the, the video where you had gameplay versus the video where I was just making a logical argument. So what I wanted to talk about, why I was bringing all of this up, is there's a post on the official forums that had a bunch of people like talking about it for the last week and a half. I, I, again, I would have talked about it whenever the iron wasn't ice cold, but I was on vacation. Difficulty of normal content. I wanted to wait to see the raid tier before I say anything. There are already posts about dungeon and trial difficulty, and now normal raids should be thrown into the discussion too. And we're not going to talk about all of this because I haven't gotten to the raid yet. And I might repeat points already said, but I think we should really make a point of this. We, the people not okay with this difficulty, need the, for the devs to hear it to hopefully make a course correction. So I'm going to focus on just this part because it applies outside of the Arcadion raids, which I haven't done yet. So I, I literally cannot talk about this at all. Um, and I also think it's absurd to be talking about... Well, I can talk about it a little bit. I already hate this person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, hold on. So there's 127 pages of responses here. Suffice to say it was a hot topic for people that don't know. The problem with the difficulty on normal fights, as I see it, is use and abuse of non-standard telegraphs. So I'm going to assume non-standard telegraphs to this. This is going to be an assumption-filled discussion. Be mad about that. I don't know. I click on skills. I assume the non-standard telegraphs are like... Why am I opening paint to do this? Right, hold on. What is, what is that? What's the what's the shadow bring... Or the Beck Lug dungeon? Grand Cosmos boss. So for people that don't know, uh, Lugus is like in an arena. <laughs> this Ace Attorney music sucks. <laughs> Lugus is in an arena. It's like a big square. And he's in the middle, obviously. Time would change. He's a turning there. I know. So he's in the middle and normally he'll have his arms down, right? Like normally his arms are down. He's got his little fire sword. And there's a few items around the room to like protect you if you get caught on fire. There's, there's like a, a bench here. There's a chair. There's another chair. There's a giant curtain hanging over here that you can you can run to if you get caught on fire by one of his attacks. Whatever. We've done the dungeon before on stream. If you've been there, you saw it. 
So I assume this guy's talking about when he says non-standard telegraphs is like Aeon was saying, things that don't do the um the big glowy orange circle of you should fucking move or the big like, oh no, the boss is gonna cleave the entire side of the room and if you're standing here, you will take damage. Normally, whenever Lugus swings, instead of getting that little cleave AOE, he'll just raise an arm and to, then he'll have his sword just out. He'll be sitting there, his big Zompok toe blade. And you get a big cast bar. You get a big, 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 big cast bar on your screen. But it says the direction. Sword slash 9000. <laughs> but it says the direction. And his hand is up. If you're at Shadowbringers, you should know after 75 dungeons, 42 story trials. You should know that this means this whole side is dangerous. Don't stand there. Don't stand on that side. But I still see people in this dungeon. And I'm going to be honest. It's usually healers. I don't know why. It's usually a healer or just a random DPS. I've never seen the tank or both DPS. It's usually a healer or a random DPS that's just chilling right here while me and the tank are over here. Every time. Yeah, I mean, aren't there bosses in 1 to 50 content that don't even show an AOE indicator? Just like sit there with a cast bar winding up? Yeah, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there's at least one. It, it might not be like main main content, but past there there's there has to there's at least like two in main main content i don't know i'm off the top of my head but i like it's not a new thing wasn't it the fight when the lalafell healer made you quit the duty yeah it was this fight it was this fight with the lalafell healer that just kept standing in the aoes and we told him to stop and he wouldn't stop um but no i i don't think I don't think use and abuse of not or use and abuse of non-standard telegraphs is a good argument, period. I'm I'm sorry. Standard telegraphs have been an option for 90% of the game. There are fights that do not use standard glowing rings on the ground. Just flat out. You just have to learn it and and adapt. Period. Titan hard mode doesn't even have a tell. You just have to memorize Titan's ability rotation. Does he not? I thought he did. I need to do Titan. I haven't done Titan basic in forever. No cast bar, no raising arms. Titan just stomps your shit if you didn't mit die. Oh, I never noticed that. I guess I didn't notice it because I'm always a DPS that's just chilling in the background. Because all I watch out for on Titan is, well, specifically, specifically Titan hard is his jump when he launches himself up into the air and his little meteor things he calls on like that's it i don't i don't look at anything else kafka would like to talk to this person about telegraphs <laughs> nasty mechanics overlap stuff you would see on extremes and harder fights i'm assuming he's talking about like again this is a this is not the same thing i'll, I'll grab the valagramonda fight but i'm gonna grab titania first this is shit we saw with Shiva. <laughs> this is not new. Titania's what? Level... What is Titania? Hold on. I have FF... Oh, wait. Well, hold on. I'm not logged in. <laughs> what level's Titania? She's like, what? 60-something? 70s? Yeah, that's a little while ago still. Like, what was there in Valagarmanda, for example? Like, I know there was something. I know we haven't gotten to the other dungeons and everything yet, by the way. So, like, I'm... I'm not going to be able to make as clear of an argument as I want to with this because I'm not far enough into the game. But I can at least look at the stuff that happened before where we are in Dontrell and it's... Overlaps are not relegated to just EXs. They, they occur everywhere, kind of, after a certain point in the game. Like, they're pretty normal. I don't understand how you get this far. I don't understand how you get to Dontrell and you think overlaps are a problem out of nowhere. Mechanics resolving too quickly for the mental capacity they demand to process. 
I will tell you how. Yeah. You have the floor, Aeon. Story skips. <laughs> the card carries. Because up to this point, the MSQ has been a walkthrough. I mean, it has, but at the same time, there's been moments where you've been... Like, not you, Aeon, but like the royal you. You being the player base. Where like, you've had to encounter this stuff. I've encountered it. And I've had fights that were like, oh, this one was difficult. I had to like think. And a good one that I will point to is the Grand Cosmos that we were just talking about. You coast don't have to apply yourself. You fuck up. You get a Volan stack, but you take maybe 50% HP. That's been my problem with the six point plus content. Um, six point to seven point content. And I'm honestly, some of the Endwalker things, I feel like they just added Volan stacks for no reason. Like they didn't do anything. I didn't feel more threatened. I wasn't dying more whenever I had more Volan stacks when we were going through the latter parts of Endwalker and definitely during six point plus. These plays have gotten have gotten by getting carried and now they're getting filtered. I mean, good. As asinine as it sounds probably to people that aren't willing to, you know, actually put in some effort when playing a game, like good. Does that make me sound sweaty to people? Probably, but I'm, I'm sorry. The game's not asking that much of you. If you want to know how much the game asks of people, go play EXs. Like, go play EXs synced at minimum eye level. Go play them. Even the old ones. Go play the old ones, and then you tell me Dontrell is too hard. Shiva EX is still more complicated than Valagarmanda. Because I went into Valagarmanda first time blind, I knew nothing about it, and I had no issue. Shiva EX, I went in blind and got my shit rocked. It took us eight attempts. Yes, we were all sprouts, but still... We were all basically Sprouts and Valagarmanda because we were playing it like day two. I still eat shit or get caught in some mechanics I'm trying to greed. I love it. That's the fun part. Expert dungeons are the most fun dungeons I've had in a long time. Here, I'll engage with this one. Mechanics resolving too quickly. Like a lot of his AOEs. Yes, this is, this is the telegraph right here. This is what people need to look at. But a lot of the AOEs that we're used to, if you don't pay attention, are these. And it's gone. It's really fast. It shows up, it appears, and it disappears. And if you get caught up in that, I, I'm sorry, if, you're, if your way of playing this game is that you see the orange appear and disappear that quickly, and you go, well, I didn't know that was coming. And you don't go, well, if it was well designed, it would probably tell me another way. So I must be missing something. And maybe you ask in chat and you go, hey, is there something I should look at for that attack so I can know where it's coming from? And, you know, the FF community is super cool. Someone will go, oh, yeah, he'll start flying around the arena. So when he does that, get into the center. That's your new AOE. I see you. I see whoever, Glacy. <laughs> um, but instead, it feels like people are going... Man, the orange disappeared really quickly. That was fucking unfair. The game sucks. Like, what do you mean it sucks? You have had so many... You have had things in Shadowbringers that taught you this. You had things in Stormblood that, shot, that taught you this. What is the Stormblood trial where it's like the round arena and it's the burrowing tank that will like appear here and it will burrow under the ground and then comes out of a wall here and just shoots across the whole arena. That's a dungeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what dungeon is that? But it's one of the first dungeons that you have to look at things outside the arena. And this isn't new. It, it's something that happens all the way back in Stormblood. Gimlet Dark. That's the one. Okay. If we're going to look at how long ago this was, it's level 70. This is in Stormblood. And there are mechanics introduced that early on where if you're here, you have to be concerned with everything outside of the arena. You can't just be concerned within the arena anymore. It's one of the first dungeons that I feel like teaches you that. And it happens more and more as the game goes on. I don't think it's, it's a fair thing to claim that man this is new 
these these telegraphs are just appearing and disappearing too quickly because you get no warning on this. You get no warning at all. I don't even think there's a cast bar. He just shows the fuck up and rocks half like a quarter of the arena and then leaves. And if there is a cast bar, I never look for it because I'm looking outside of the arena. I'm not looking at the cast bar. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't know you could do this. Because I didn't. I didn't know you could do that either. I literally had no idea. And I would also, to be even more generous, I would wager a lot of these players are going... Where is it? Uh, where? Yeah. They think you have to come into here to do this. So it's like, why would I do that? Why would I waste my time coming in here to change my camera angle? And they don't realize you can just do a control up and down on the keyboard. But it's like, and this, you can just click on your little gill icon. I learned this the other day to open up your currency tab. You don't have to do control C. You can just click on the gill icon, which is still faster to do control C, but I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could just click on the icon now to get to what you want. Like I don't know how to change this. Like this says it's a rotation. I don't know how to change this. <gasps> ah! You could just right click. Okay, I didn't know that. That's wild. Maybe it's because I, I grew up on games where I didn't have any hand holding period. So I ended up with a lot of just, you know, time spent exploring random nooks and crannies. And it's why I play games the way I do and why people get annoyed when they watch me play open world games on stream. I don't understand the mindset of getting mad at the game first before considering, oh, maybe there's a, a, a good reason for this. I think it's just players are not understanding what is wanted from them from FF14. I would wager the majority if you t like, if you just explained, they would get it. And yes, there's a discussion to be had with like curiosity and taking initiative and just, you know, using process of elimination to figure things out. There's an argument to be made there, but that argument turns into do the players that are having problems with this content just lack critical thinking capability? Because that's a that's a different discussion I don't want to get into. Not because I think it's a it's a non-stream discussion. It's just a long discussion. Might be that they've just become complacent. I like that's where I am with it. It's just complacency. It's not that they're bad, it's just complacency. Being bad is not permanent. This absolutely this. The new spooky dungeon boss won my first run through died like eight times five runs later and i might take one vuln as black mage said it yourself the game has tried to show these people tricks since ARR. yeah it, it, okay we have to agree though ff14 sucks at explaining things beyond the very very bare minimum the, in, in my best example glacia i know you're in the corner sorry the best example i'm not gonna go there the best example is the 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 smith next to the in rooms who, who does that? Who runs that content? I ran it for for um, Bard, not Bard, Archer. I ran it for Archer on my very first time playing the game. And I ran it for Pugilist about 10 minutes later when I went, Archer sucks. But I only ran it for like two or three of the things that it wanted me to do. And then I went, okay, I can figure out the rest. The amount of people that know don't even know the Smith exists kind of boggles my mind. It really kind of boggles my mind. And something that will probably boggle everyone else's mind, I didn't know you had to repair your gear for a very long time. I did not know that that little piece of functionality existed. I was literally in a group. Um, I used to run content every night with a... Uh, uh, VV and some other people, we would run roulettes every night because we would all get off work and we'd come home. And this was before I streamed. We would come home, we'd hop on FF and we would just run roulettes every night and, you know, kind of hang out, talk about the day, normal, you know, normal people shit. <laughs> there were, I forget which dungeon it was, but it was probably near Heaven's Word where I just kept taking a crazy amount of damage. And I think VV was the one who told me, but she finally was like, what's your armor uh, rating at? Like your durability. I was like, what? And she had to explain that there was a durability system. And the game just doesn't explain that to you in a way that's engaging enough that you're not going to accidentally click past it like I did, I think. Because I think I just clicked past it. 
this could also be coming from people that only play for the story and they encounter the dungeon once and they dip. Well, then they can just get fucked. If they want to play, like... Okay, I'm going to sound like Zeems here for a second. <laughs> I promise there's nuance to this. Um, If you play only for the story and you're going dungeons are too hard, I'm sorry... The player base might... Okay, you know what? I'm going to merge Zeems' argument with trust with my argument real quick. This community has decided the story is important. You should play this game for the story, right? We can all agree on that. We can all understand that. We all understand that, even if that's not why we play it ourselves. If you are struggling with mechanics to the point that you are impeding other people, go do a trust. Go run it as a trust drop that shit to the easiest difficulty if it's a quest that lets you do it just just run it as a trust and learn the fight and then get past it that's one of the few times i will say trust has a a, a real strong place in this in this game is for that sort of situation it's it's almost the inverse of why i don't do it on stream anymore um i do it off stream still when I was playing DS3 off stream, I did this off stream I, I, like, a, like a year ago before we streamed it. I, I do this in Monster Hunter too. I am one of those crazy people that goes, yeah, I'm not touching summoning at all in Dark Souls. I'm not touching, touching multiplayer in Monster Hunter on a monster I have not soloed yet. I want to beat them by myself to understand the hardest version of this fight. And then when we go play with friends, I will be a non-issue in holding them back. Yes, I understand there is fun to be had if you are struggling in a group. There is fun to be had. However... There's a difference between people losing an hour of their day because you suck so much at a particular fight and your whole group that you static with, basically, I'll use FF terms, losing an hour and laughing about it because of how bad you are at that content. There's a big difference. Story is important, but this is a game, not a visual novel. You, the world, you are, you ain't, you aren't entitled to your victory screen just because you pay us up. Yeah, no, you're not. So yeah, I'm telling the people to go play a more boring version of the game, but it does frustrate me. Anyway, okay. <laughs> One too many catch this mechanics. Mechanics that have you running around like a headless chicken, evading seemingly random patterns. Okay, uh, I I have a question for the FF14 psychos. Are any of the patterns actually random other than maybe the Boja, um, the Boja mechanic, uh, the call, what's it called? It's like call at arms or something where the little spider thing starts shooting missiles up into the air and it just starts randomly dropping them while sending out straight line AOEs. What is that? Even that, I don't buy that that's random. I feel like it's got a, it, it has a guaranteed process to it. Like, are there any random there's a lot of random max mechanics that are actually baited. That's what I mean. Like they're not random. They they just look random. There's one in EX Dungeon that's some random ass bullshit. I don't think I've seen any that made me go, oh, it's really random. Like the closest one was in Boja. If everyone stacks up, you would start to see the pattern. Yeah, like I, the closest one I've seen is only in Boja though. Like I, so, you guys have probably seen more than me. The closest one I've seen is in Boja. And even in Boja, it wasn't, it didn't feel random. That's why you stack in Savage Ultimates because dropping those AoEs everywhere and cutting each other off is going to cause downtime or worse death. No, that makes sense. I know we haven't finished Dontrell yet, but I don't think my opinion will change by the end of Dontrell. And if it does, uh, to the VOD people seeing this a month from now, whoops. <laughs> Or, uh, hold on. If I'm right still, um, whatever. There, there's two reactions. Go play Shiva Minai level. Sorry, I can't do that. I'm sick that day. <laughs> um, we can... Again, I haven't seen these fights, but there's, like, the philosophy here that we can talk about. All this has been making fights in this expansion frustrating and, and exhausting. 
The honeybee fight had me wishing for the healer to just not raise me. I was there in the floor, dead for the nth time, thinking that I don't really want to be on that duty. Okay, so just either ask the healer to leave you dead so you can learn the fight, go watch a guide, or um, maybe the optional content that is a raid that's optional, it's a normal raid, maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's maybe that difficulty ain't up your alley. J just a theory that the optional content that's mo meant to be hard might be hard. I know exactly what part of the fight they're talking about. And I guarantee if people stacked, it would probably be way easier, but it's normal. So no one's going to approach it with that coordination. Yeah. It, it, I think that's the fun of it, though. If like the, it's the chaos of it, it's like people learning how things work. It, it, I don't know. It's it, like, look, I, I play a lot of games. Okay, like I play bullet hells, I play rhythm games, I play FPSs, I play MMOs, I play one MMO, I play this one <laughs> specifically. Uh, coincidentally, all of those genres I play in this game also. But no, um, because I know someone's gonna hear me say I play bullet hells and go, oh, so you you're, you're just you're, you're just good at video games then? It's like, no, no. It's not how I'm just going to counter the argument right now. No, me being co like competent at bullet hells and shmups are there. Those are completely detached because bullet hells and shmups are completely detached. Me being decent at bullet hells does not make me good at shmups. I sucked ass at shmups until I put in the time and effort and learned how they worked on, on a consistent level between games like each shmup is very similar but they're also very different and mmos are the same i was there in the floor dead for the nth time thinking that i really don't want to be on that duty and it's not the issue of learning the fight or it's not an issue of learning the fight that i can do but we don't do this content alone you know i think it was the fourth time i was doing valagramondo when i finally managed to finish without dying myself but that's a moot point when half the party was dead half the time. Even knowing the fight doesn't make it any less of a disheartening experience. Then do trust, man. If you're going to complain about that, do trust. We did it on stream and I was annoyed, yes, but I was having a lot of fun with that annoyance. It was so refreshing to hit content where we were struggling on like actual MSQ duties. It was so refreshing to hit something where we had to actually like watch people struggle finally. But if it's a disheartening experience because you've learned it and other people haven't, you have two options. I'm sorry. You do trust. You go do trust or you go find a static to play with. And you bring them in and you run the shit together. Which means you got to go talk to people on Discord. I think it's absurd to be complaining about this. I know this is an old topic, but I still want to fully go through it. And yes, this concerns normal raids too, even if they are optional content. No, no, it doesn't. No, it literally doesn't. You stating that it does doesn't make that true. It doesn't concern optional content because it's optional. It's allowed to be harder. It's allowed to ask a lot more of you. It's allowed to be ob like obtuse about how it asks that of you. It is optional content. That is like saying the hard mode in a game is too hard when you have normal and easy available to you. And then when you're bitching about normal, you go, you know, now that I think about it, hard mode's too hard too. It doesn't concern that difficulty tier because obviously based on this, you don't want that difficulty tier because you don't like it. Even if this wasn't a raid, this is Valor Garmanda. You cannot take that attitude of even the fourth time and get Valor Garmanda when I finally managed to finish it without dying. And then say it's a moot point because half the party was dead half the time and even knowing the fight myself doesn't make it any less of a disheartening experience. You can't take that mindset and apply it to an optional piece of content that is meant to be harder. Just period. I'm not bad at the game. The game is bad. It's, this is just selfish. It's self-serving. It doesn't actually care about the game. It's just self-serving. 
In fact, I'm going to take the skip option for this raid tier, something I haven't done since I started playing in Shadowbringers. And that's the point, really. For the most part, in the past three expansions, difficulty for normal content was fa fair outside of some hiccup here and there. We haven't done Arcadian, so I can't go too into this and compare, but still fresh content. There's still plenty of people that are going to be first timers. That's the other thing. I'm curious, did this person do Shadowbringers and Endwalker and Stormblood raids like day one? And if they did, I think it's fair to consider the option of maybe uh, you just got really lucky with the people you were partied with for the first week. It happens. Sometimes you just get a really good party. Sometimes you get a really bad party. I firmly believe that content is meant to be done via the duty finder where you don't choose who you're playing with. Shouldn't be this level of punishing. And I know that JP people do Savage and Duty Finder. Man, that sounds like heaven. I, I want to play on JP. But we don't do that in, Nor in NA or EU. For better or worse, Western players do not behave like JP players. Finally, I think that people that thrive with difficulty, the ones that demand harder content, already have EXs, Savages, Ultimates, Criterion Dungeons, and more. Yoshi P is even touting Savage Alliances. These people are eating really, really good. Do they need to take normal content too? Can casual players have something easiest to play, please? A change in the way you have to read a mechanic does not mean a change in difficulty. I'm that's 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 the crux of my point, I think. A change in how something is telegraphed does not intrinsically make it harder. Yes! There are exceptions before some YouTube comment with the thumb up their ass is like. Well, actually, yes, there are clearly exceptions. There are very, very obviously exceptions. But I would argue that exception is a one-time thing if you're observant. And I will look at Gimlet Dark to point to one of those exceptions where it's, yeah, there's no, a, there's no warning that the tank is going to shoot out of the wall and blast through the arena. But after the first time, and you know what's going to happen, it's the same thing as a regular AoE. It's just as simple. It's just as easy. Still cackle at watching vids for the first time Shadowbringer Alliance raid. And, okay, yeah, you know what? Hold on, because I was in my head, I was going... I mean, Eden hasn't been that crazy, and we haven't finished Eden. I haven't done the last one yet. Eden wasn't that crazy. The near raids were insane. Like, the near raids are still crazy. It, it's still, like, you gotta really try to not die. <laughs> like, they're still crazy. And they're old content at this point. Sarcasm aside, like, the answer to a lot of these problems are, I think, just genuinely a misunderstanding of what the game wants. And also, it's... If, after understanding it and you know the fight, your problem extends to, well, other players are still sucking. Uh, first of all, you were sucking not five minutes ago. So have some courtesy, <laughs> but also just do trust. If you know the fight, just do the trust version or go find a group that's willing to do it with you as like a static almost. I don't want to see this person in a full party like them. Go do the Bahamut raids and then come back and tell us current content's too hard. That's why, that's why I was saying like, go do Shiva EX. I'm picking a specific EX that I think is basic bitch to a lot of people. I feel like a lot of the people, especially like, Glacy, Aeon, I know you guys do savages and things. I'm confident that Shiva EX is baby mode anymore. But your first time in Shiva EX is not easy. You can't complain about optional content being too hard. And have the expectation of that complaint be Square needs to adjust it. You can complain about it being hard and going... I guess it's not for me. But if your complaint goes, eh, it's too hard. Square should make it easier for players like me. No, you can get fucked. It's not for you. It is not content for you, obviously.